Hey, what's up guys? Bitcoin price might be down on some bearish China news. In this video, I will explain why this could be actually a good thing, then Harold Paul will explain why BTC is likely to rally towards the end of the year, and possibly even hit 250,000 bucks. Let's start with the cryptocurrency market. The market cap is at around $1.9 trillion. Bitcoin's diamonds remains at around 42% and Ethereum diamonds is at 18%. Today, Bitcoin's price is at around 42,000 bucks. Yes, it's down by $10,000 from its recent local high. That's close to 20% drop. Considering the fact that not so long ago we had 55% drop, so this one is certainly not that big. On the day, BTC is up by 3.4% and on the week is down by 10%. Ethereum dropped below $3,000 sentimental level. Let's see if it will be able to bounce back in the next few days. Nonetheless, ETH has been performing very well year over year. It's up by 8.5x or so. Today, ETH is up by 4%, but it is down by 15% on the week. Cardano ADA is actually approaching its 2017 all-time high once again. Today it reached $2.35, it's up by 10% of the day. Definitely the best daily performing asset in the top 10 listing. On the week, it's likely up as well. In meanwhile, the rest of the cryptocurrency market are mostly down. What else we have here? Dogecoin is closing top 10 listing. Today it is at 20 cents. It's up on the day by 3% and is down by 13% of the week. Ok, let's move on. As Bitcoin price is down in the recent few days, market sentiment shifted as well. Here we have not unrealized profit slash loss, it's also a good indicator as a market sentiment. Recently, market sentiment decreased from this green line of denial phase to this yellow line that is anxiety phase. Market is definitely feels more anxious when BTC price is down from $52,000 to this current $42,000. However, if it would go up from let's say $32,000 to this current price of $42,000, then the market would be way more optimistic and happy. Personally, as a contrarian investor, I prefer buying BTC when it goes down, when people are very fearful and when there is a blood on the streets. This is the best time to buy a large chunk of BTC, on my opinion. Yes, you can also dollar cost average, but once in a while, market will present those opportunities and this is the time to be more aggressive. Fear and greed index today is showing fear as well. It is currently at 28, lowest number in the recent month. Last month, market was very happy, indicated 75. Over weeks and days, emotions can change drastically. This next chart represents Bitcoin long-term hodler net position change. When the net position is in green, it means long-term holders accumulate in Bitcoin, and when it is in red, of course it means they are selling. As we can see, they tend to accumulate BTC when the Bitcoin price consolidates sideways. When BTC starts to rise from $10,000 all the way till $64,000, they were not sellers, which is quite surprising to me. Why would you sell into the rally? Maybe they have contrarian mindset. Maybe, but my approach is slightly different. My strategy, do not sell and buy when price gets relatively low and there is a fear in the market. When BTC dropped from $64,000 to $30,000, they start accumulating again. And currently, they are still buying. Look. You have 20% discount from the local high. I don't think this is a bad buy. Here we have another interesting chart. It represents long-term holder realist price that is in the blue line and the long-term holder MVRV ratio. MVRV ratio uses blockchain analysis to identify periods where Bitcoin is extremely overvalued or undervalued relatively to its fair value. When the ratio is at around 3, it means that BTC is fairly valued. Current and VRV ratio is at around 2.7, which is below fair value. Long-term holder ratio price is slightly below $15,000. This is the price how much long-term holders paid on average. Here's the interesting part. When there is divergence of realized price and VRV ratio, when the realized price goes up and meanwhile and VRV ratio goes down, this is a good indicator that the price is approaching to the bottom and soon it will take off once again. We saw this in 2015 when the divergence happened and the price was approaching to the bottom then it consolidated. Also, we saw similar patterns back in 2018. Divergence happened, BTC hit the bottom and consolidated. Now we have a similar pattern playing out. This could mean more consolidation, possibly slightly more downside, 
then it will take off to the moon. On the other hand side, we have a different chart that tells us slightly different story. This chart represents the current Bitcoin price action that is in white all the way back from April 2020. And in the blue color, we have 2012 and 2013 Bitcoin bull market. Patterns do indeed look very similar. Back in 2012, we had even bigger retracement. BTC corrected by close to 70% before entering into another rally. Now we corrected by 55% or so, then we had bounce back and now we see consolidation. If this current BTC price will follow 2013 rally, then we should expect BTC to hit around $250,000 by the end of 2021. We have slightly more than 3 months till the end of the year. Let's see what will happen. Surely Raul Paul thinks BTC will rally by the end of the year. Let's take a look what he has to say. Raul, talking about numbers, uh, is it a lot of news flow today or is it a lot of noise? Let's talk a little bit about what's happening uh, in China. News wires flashing around 5 o'clock this morning, uh, talking about China apparently expanding, extending its ban on Bitcoin and related cryptocurrency technologies. What are your thoughts on this? They are, I don't think it's really much of an extension. What they're trying to do is clean up the leakages, I think, ahead of the launch of the digital yuan. Yeah. Um, and so it's more about that and more about illegal capital flight and just cleaning up their own financial system than it is. I mean, as far as we can see, it's not an outright ban for owning crypto. Really, what they're trying to do is get people, stop people moving money outside of the Chinese system. And I understand why that is as well. So it sounds like big news. I don't think it is big news. I don't think it's like China bans everybody ever using crypto ever, and they're all going to go to the gulags if they do. I don't think that's the case. Um, they've also obviously got rid of mining, as we're aware of. And there's probably still, because within one of the statements was another reference to mining. So there's probably still mining activity going on. You know, it's a big country. And so they do want to stop the mining because you know, it's... I believe that the stopping of the mining is about both the for the green energy part, but really it's about the competition for electric, electrical resources, because um, you know there is a scarce supply of some commodities right now, and the last thing they want is to raise uh, electricity prices on the pop general population. Speaking of China, it seems like they're banning crypto transactions. Firstly, they banned Bitcoin mining, and now crypto transactions. This authoritarian and totalitarian regime wants to do anything to stay in power and eliminate any potential threats. Some people say it's a fake news, some people say it's real. If it's real, let's not forget that China also banned American businesses, such as Twitter that rallied by 5000% since then, Facebook rallied by almost 15000% since the ban, Google rallied by almost 1000%, Snapchat rallied by also 15000%. And of course, Bitcoin, which was banned many times by China. To bring it back to the numbers, Raul, I'm looking at the screen here. Bitcoin trading at 42,401. Uh, it's only off about 5.3% 24 hours. Yeah, it's mainly noise. You, you get used to this after a while once you've been invested in the crypto space is that, you know, it's an 86 vol asset currently versus the S&P is like 10 um, so it's eight times as more volatile as the S&P. So a 10% move is just basically like the S&P having a 1% move. So it's not really that much of a that much of an issue. What is interesting is Bitcoin is very much following. We've talked about this before. It's pattern from 2013, and Ethereum is following the Bitcoin pattern from 2017, and things like Solana are following the the Ethereum pattern from 2017. And they all kind of suggest that this might be a decent entry point for a large run up to the end of the year. And that's how I'm thinking of this. Yeah, I'm looking at a calculator here that estimates Bitcoin volatility on a 30 and 60 day basis. Uh, estimated 30 day volatility, 4% daily. Estimated 60 day volatility, 3.7% daily. To your point, noise. Yeah. Yeah. And these things are. These things are noise. We've just had a decent run up. We've been correcting um, for the last few days. You know, we had a sharp move and nobody really knew what the news was. It was probably part of this. Um, and fine, it's, it's kind of normal, I think, for most participants are so used to it. 
and anybody who's been in for a while, I mean, we, we had a 50% correction already. So, like, this is like, bah, throw me a 20% correction. I don't care. Yeah. Talking about news cycle related events having an impact on Bitcoin, you had a really uh, impressive uh, tweet storm thread about the remarks by SEC Chair Gary Gensler a few days ago uh, when he came out with some things that seemed fairly bearish, effectively saying, I'm not sure that cryptocurrency as an asset class is going to be constituted in its current form for a very long time. Uh, you had some interesting insight about what that might suggest for the longer term, bigger picture, forward structure of markets and regulation in this space. We know there's KYC. We know there's AML. Those are without question going to happen. Tax compliance without question will happen. And then beyond that, there has to be risk warnings, caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. And there has to be some regulation, some oversight over scams. So there's maybe some way of getting back money and other insights. But, but for somebody to have, who's got the power, the voice of God to say, that is a scam and that is not a scam. Oh, well, you know, Polkadot, well, that could be a security. You can't invest in that unless you've got a million bucks. Or it, this is just cannot happen. If the US does this, this is the fastest growing adoption of any technology in all human history. There's 150 million people worldwide using crypto um, right now. <clears throat> by my estimate, we get to a billion, dollar, a billion people by 2024. If that's the case, then this market is going offshore. It is not going away. And so regulating people, all you're doing is, is hampering the investment choices and the future earnings of millions of Americans. So I understand what he's doing now. He's laying out the stall. Everyone's going to have to go through court cases, Ripple being one of the first ones. And then a bunch of people are going to go to court over this, and there's going to be a big fight, and there's going to be a bunch of lobbyists that are going to have to be created for the industry. So this is not going away quickly, and it's going to scare the market occasionally. And then there's going to be a lot of FUD of people on Twitter going, see, they're going to ban Ethereum as a thing. You must buy Bitcoin. All of this nonsense. Everyone just calm down. This is going to take some time, and it is expected, and it has to happen. We have to get the regulations changed. And the SEC will work with everybody in the end. It's too big an industry. And that's the point about regulation. The moment it's cleared up, the thing will absolutely explode because then it's going to go total full adoption. Um, so we have to go through this. The Internet went through it and, and it will get solved. Raul Paul still expects BTC price to rally by the end of the year. And if this current Bitcoin price will fall 2013 Bitcoin price, then we might hit $250,000 by the end of the year. Let me know what you guys think. Will we see another rally by the end of the year? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.